Welcome, one and all, to the Cosmic Comic Nation, powered by Comic-Con Radio. I'm your host, Tom Torme, and if you love wildly imaginative takes on popular characters geared towards a younger audience, but faithful enough to their source material that fans of any age can enjoy them, then you're probably familiar with my next guest. He's published over 20 books as part of the DC Super Pets line, as well as books like Tiny Titans and Itty Bitty Hellboy, along with his longtime friend and collaborator, Franco. You might know his stellar creator-owned works and characters such as Patrick the Wolf Boy. He's the co-founder of Oh Yeah Comics, which is not only a publisher. You like that? I tried to hit the Oh Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh Yeah, I, man. You know, oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. He's not only a <laughs> which is not only a publication, uh, excuse me, a publisher, but it's also a brick and mortar location with three locations around the United States, one in Harris, New Harrison, New York, the other in Skokie, Illinois, and the third Art is Muncie, Muncie, Indiana. Yes, that's yeah, Muncie, man. Indiana. I, I have a hard time, but I appreciate it. And as well, it's just an <laughs> online shop, too. So please welcome the three time Eisner mm -hmm. Award winner, Art Balthazar. Thank you, All Art. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you, sir. Yeah, man, it's fun to be here. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, I, I think I mentioned it before, and if it's okay if I mention it again. Uh, because I know my son would absolutely, my sons would absolutely kill me if I didn't. I am and have been a huge fan of yours since my boys were e wee bitty babies, itty bitty nice. babies. And uh, we came across the DC Super Pets line. And as a DC fan, I wanted to get them, hook them while they were young. And I wanted yeah, to love it, Batman and Superman. And every year when we made the trek to New York Comic Con, seeing you, at the table, seeing you in Artist Alley was always a highlight. And every year, you were uh, so kind and so welcoming to the children. Uh, you you signed their books. You created um, generally uh, uh, like index card size pictures of Captain America, Venom. Yeah. They're all, <laughs> they're all still hanging in my kids' rooms. And they were uh, infatuated with you. And my, my son, who was 15 years old this year, went to Comic-Con with his girlfriend and his friend. And he saw you. And uh, his friends were sh just were elated to see the, how happy he was when he came to your booth, and he was so happy to go on his own. So, uh, believe it or oh, not, oh, this, this is the first time we're talking like this. But you and your art have played such an important role in the my children's development. So, for that, I am truly appreciative. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, man, it's cool. I I I love hanging out at the shows and seeing the people who who uh, the fans the people who read my comics and, and I get a kick out of it. I love when, I, when older kids come up and say, I've been reading your comics all my life and they're only like 20, 25. Huh. But I know that uh, I started out like a lot of kids start reading my books when they're about six mm -hmm. and then they keep going. Um, and I'm, I'm meeting kids now who are going to college who read tiny Titans. And there's a little bit slightly older kids who I'm meeting, who read my Gorilla Gorilla stuff in the Disney Adventures right. before yeah. Tiny Titans. So it's cool, man. I just love making comics, and that's all I know how to do, which is right. well, you, you, is, that's why I do it. <laughs> you do it well. You do it well. Your, your oh, art is so kinetic and so vibrant uh, and so just and bright. Uh, it's It really is uh, just a, a, a pleasure. Uh, now, now uh, we, we're talking about this as, as we're kind of talking about this idea. Comic books in general, I mean, I could show you. We, we, I'm sure you've read, and you know, we could talk about comic books where Superboy Prime is punching the head off of Wilderpeace. Yeah. You know, we could talk about. There's a lot of gruesomeness. There's a lot of violence in comic books, and for a long time, uh, comic books were really just going towards that dark and grim direction. Uh, but, but not you. You know, you you stayed the course. You stayed true to your style, and you stayed true to your art form. When when you're creating these books, are you? writing them with children in mind or are you writing books that pretty much children of any age whether they're four or 40 can enjoy yeah i make books that i make the way i make them because that's how i draw and that's what i'm thinking and i don't really make books for kids i make books that kids could read so i i have an all audience in my head because when I grew up watching uh, Hanna Barbera, like McGill Gorilla cartoons and Fred Flintstone and stuff like that, and Tom and Jerry, Woody Woodpecker, and I know that adults, adults like that too. Um, right. And I'm always thinking more Cartoon Network style, like um, Powerpuff Girls or Johnny Bravo or Dexter's Lab. If you're on, if you enjoy that, it, 
as and as an adult. So your kids can too. And to me, like the kids' cartoons are more like Dora the Explorer or Blue's Clues. Mm-hmm. That to me is like for kids and parents can't watch that. They have a hard time. Oh, but God. if you put SpongeBob on, their parents are gonna sit there and laugh with the kids. So that's kind of where I'm at. I I, I make comics and cartoon characters that that just have been in my head for years and since i'm a kid i always wanted to draw comics so so um i don't know any other way how to make i am a cartoonist at heart um it's in my blood uh i just draw and this is the way things look when i draw them <laughs> I, I, are you are you laughing as you're writing it and, and because yeah <laughs> and, okay great because as a fan like that i like to picture that that i like to picture that as i'm laughing and reading it you were laughing as you wrote it and laughing as you yeah. drew it. Okay. Oh, I, I re-edit it and I write stuff and re-edit it and change it all, all the time. Yeah. Like I'm writing a book right now called, uh, it's me, it's called uh, my own book called Meteor Might. And this is issue oh, three. Yeah. And I wrote it three or four times already uh, because I didn't like where it went or I thought something was funnier. So the last eight pages, I keep rewriting. And, and finally, I think I got it where I, I think it's funny. But when, when me and, Franco were writing Tiny Titans. If we were, if we didn't laugh at a joke, we didn't put it in the book. But if both of us were laughing, hysterical, we had so we got to write that. We got to work on that. Right. And so that's how we wrote. If a story was funny, we it made it into the comic, and that's how we wrote Patrick the Wolf Boy. If we were both laughing, it's going to go in the comic. If it if it didn't land or I didn't laugh at his joke or he didn't laugh at mine, it's like, nah, that was a dud. So I know that if it's funny, if we think it's funny, it's going to be funny. And it's kind of like that old story you always hear about Stan Lee when he was going to get fired from Marvel and they told him to write one more thing. And his wife told him, oh, yeah. write the story you want to write. And he came up with the Fantastic Four. Well, that's how I think of that all the time. And when I make my own books now that I'm, I'm kind of self-publishing a lot of my stuff now that I'm doing the book I want. And whenever I work on my own characters, even when I was working with a uh, itty bitty Hellboy and tiny Titans, I always knew that they belonged to someone else. Like tiny Titans, Hellboy weren't my characters, but mm-hmm. I feel like they are. I treat them like they are. And kids, yeah. when kids read them and they read uh, uh, tiny Titans, Hellboy and then Wolf boy and an action cat and, feel like all of my characters are in the same universe so i often refer to like super pets or tiny titans as my guys my characters because no, I, if, I, yeah. Yeah, if i if i worked on them they i kind of keep well, them no, they, they, they definitely mine. have your mark they definitely have yeah. that, that uniqueness about them you know that may be hellboy but it yeah. is hellboy feels like although true to the character feels like yeah. a, a completely different right so as do the tiny titans as do uh all the other works you were i mean everything from dc super pets you know uh and uh i i and you'll have to forgive me i'm there was a great one um uh archimites no am i archimaniacs archimaniacs yes yeah I mean, little bruce so, wayne and all yeah, his bad right. guys Fruity, yeah Fruity, right yeah that's fun because like a lot of times when we write and and make up stuff i always think can i do that you know, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, yeah, I can do whatever I want. And no one seems to stop me, stop gotcha. me or Franco when we write stuff at uh, DC Comics or Dark Horse. They just let us go because they know that the um, the comic's going to be cool. And if I get a new editor, the new editor, wherever I work, a new editor always comes in there and just wants to change stuff, put their mark on the book. Sure. And at first, a, a, a few for, I got to train them. I always said, oh, I got to train this editor a little bit more because to let them know that I'm going to do, I'm going to be okay. Just wait till the book's over and then uh, you'll be able to read it and you'll, and you'll like it. And um, that's, so that's kind of like, I, I'm so surprised that no one uh, tries to hold me back or put handcuffs on me when it comes to working with, like Superman or something. And uh, it's kind of cool. I, I really oh. lo- like it. And I, and I'm so grateful for that position, you know? Kind yeah, of cool. yeah. I, I'm I'm actually a little shocked to hear that. That uh, yeah. I mean, I guess that's, I guess that is a testament to the longevity of your career and uh, the high quality products that you put out. That they will give you their babies. They'll give you Superman. They'll give you Hellboy. And, yeah. And Carte Blanche and a little free reign where they're not uh, giving you notes and uh, they're not 
you know, you're, they're letting it go your way. It's a, it's more of a testament to, yeah. to you, I believe. I've right? been told by I've been told by DC Comics has told me a few times that I know more about their characters than they do. Oh and, yeah. And I I agree. Like if if there was a PhD in comic books, I think I would have it because I've been studying these characters since I'm like six years old. And, right. You know, it grew up with Super Friends and then Superman the movie and then all the cartoons that were on, the Spider-Man, his amazing friends, the Batman animated series. So all of this stuff has been in my mind since I'm a little kid, even playing with Mego action figures and Star Wars toys. And and uh, I always tease my friends, too. Well, it's a it's a joke. I say, if you hire a, a guy who's going to write Star Wars, one of the questions in the interview should be, how long did you have to wait for your Boba Fett toy in the mail? <laughs> and if the, and if they say forever, then you know yeah. you got them. But right. if they say what Boba Fett toy, then you don't hire that person to write Star Wars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you got to right. say what was your first action figure. And if they don't tell you, they can't. You know, if they don't know, then they're like, no, you move on. And oh, same yeah. with like, what's the first time you've ever saw Superman? What was your first experience? Mm. And depending on what it is, you're going to know if they say super friends, you're good. If they say Christopher Reeve, you're good. You know, it, it depends all where, where things start, even with, with all these characters. And I know that with tiny Titans, me and Franco both read the George Perez, Marth Wolfman oh, books. Nice. Yeah. And so when that was, uh, when, when, when they asked us about tiny Titans, they, they asked us about teen Titans. The, the call from DC was, uh, what, what are your favorite characters at DC Comics? And I said, Teen Titans and uh -huh. Superman. That's And they said, they freak out. Like, they said, oh, we got this idea called Tiny Titans. Are you interested? Like, yes. Yes, say said, no more. Well, yeah, we're like, we want, they said, we want Patrick the Wolf Boy comics, but what are characters? I'm like, okay, so no fighting, just cartoon gags, just like, uh -huh. you could have good kids, bad kids, but no bad guys. Nobody's out to destroy the world or hurt anybody or there's really no superpowers unless it's part of the gag or something. Right. But uh it was it was cool, man. I I I loved it. We went like 50 issues for that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it it's was a, cool. A run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then All after right. that too, we, we did Superman, uh Superman Family for 12 issues and then Superpowers for another six. And I think I did like either 48 or 50 or 52 books of Super Pets. And uh, for that oh, wow. one, yeah. yeah, for that one, I had different writers. I worked with different writers. I wrote mm -hmm. a few of them. I think I wrote uh, I wrote the Hawkman book, and I put out in the first batch of books. I wrote all of the plots. I mm -hmm. submitted all the plot lines because to get the writers going, and uh, because they would DC Comics, Warner Brothers would say, "Well, what does Beppo the Super Monkey do?" <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I would write a plot with Beppo and write a plot with like Streaky. And the writers took my plot and ran with it. So it was cool. And so once the writers got a hang of the characters, uh, it was fun to work on those too, man. And, and, and you could tell from those books. And I had said 20 because that's that's what I have up there. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I, uh, you could tell from those books your encyclopedic knowledge of DC characters. I mean, just yeah. the, the obscure – and as 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 a person myself that loves DC Obscure, the, the, the further back you go, <clears throat> it, you know I, I love it. I love it. So uh, seeing all those different animals uh, in the that had made their appearance, like Beppo, like Comet, yeah, and, and ju just seeing them uh, in your style for a new generation was awesome. Yeah, uh, and it's fun because uh, when I was working on the encyclopedia, mm -hmm. it's a big, thick. I don't know how three hundred pages maybe, but it's real thick. And um, DC Comics said. Uh, we need we need more pets for all of these heroes and these bad guys. Because most of them bad guys needed pets, so they gave me a list of characters who needed pets, and then they gave me a list of like name suggestions and stuff. So I forgot how many characters I created for DC Comics, but it was weird. Be like when I would create a character, I would submit a name like, "Hey, it won't be cool to call this character this," and then they would always change the name. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I get it. They just want me to design the character. So <laughs> I let them name all the characters. And it's been funny, like a few times when I was creating the super pet characters, I created a character that I liked and I didn't want to give it to them. <laughs> so so I would make something else for them. So <laughs> there's right, a lot of right, characters yeah, right, that right. became my own that should have, yeah. that could have yeah. went to DC Comics. 
Yeah. I, I, and I guess that, that, that brings you into the beauty of publishing uh, your own books, like, like yeah. Patrick the Wolf Boy, which I just saw this amazing cover on your Instagram page of yeah. Patrick the Wolf Boy by night. And yeah. such a spectacular homage. What, what, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing a, I'm, I'm trying to do monthly books now. I'm going to publish a book every month and it's all self uh, my own characters and stuff, my own creator own, but I'm teaming up with comic Tom who has a, uh, he has a mystery box. He has a YouTube channel and we just got sponsored by, by whatnot to print these books. Cool. And so I'm printing 3000 books for subscribers for Tom's subscription. Then I get a whole bunch of books for myself, but then whatnot is printing 3000 copies of a homage cover for charity. So we're donating the books to uh, comic books for kids. And I think also that there's going to be comic books for military worked in there somewhere. But right now, all the homage covers, the variant covers are going towards charity. So they're really rare. Like, right. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know if these books are going to show up anywhere. I'm going to get us, I'm going to get a, some of them. I'm going to get a batch of them to sell, but I don't know. They're not available to like retailers or anything. So they're going to pretty much be uh, a book that's exclusive to me. Which on my website, my my website's electricmilkcomics.com. It's my store site where I sell all my books. So these homage covers or homage covers, or whatever, are um are going to this charity. And that guy with the charity, comic books or kid, man, he's having a great time. He loves it. He's he calls me up now and then and says, "Hey man, there's a pallet of books outside my garage." I'm like, "What happened?" He goes, "All oh, you, that's it's a pallet of three thousand copies of your books." I'm like, wow. And so. We're printing two books at two books, two months at a time. Like we get two months of books at once at, at printing. So he gets 3000 of each issue. So he got 6,000 copies <laughs> sitting on his, in his warehouse right now. And um, 6,000 copies that a lot of people would love to get their hands on. Yeah. So yeah. they're all going to kids in hospitals, sick kids with cancer and stuff. Great. But I'm sure there'll be some, I'm going to have some pretty soon, but um, I'm not sure. Uh, where the, I don't have them yet, so I'm not sure where they're going to turn up with these variant covers. Right. But uh, like the regular covers, I have them, and I'm going to have them at shows. I'll probably have all of these variant covers at my appearances too, at my table at uh, like C2E2 and San Diego Con in New York and all these places. So I'll, they'll definitely be able to be available to the public. But I don't. Besides me, I don't know where else they're going to be. So uh, well, I, yeah, I hope it's gonna be fun. Left for New York Comic Con when I get a chance to see. Yeah, them. I'll have some. <laughs> I'll definitely get one at the table. Uh, yeah, they're cool, man. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's cool that you're getting involved with the charity. I mean, co comics for kids, comics for the military. That sounds like yeah, a, yeah. two. I, I assume the same organization, but two great purposes. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. The, 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 you know, I, I, they've been sending comic books to the military since the 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 forties. So it, it's yeah. good to see that tradition continue and that they're, they're still getting a chance. And you know what the cool thing about that I always think is that our, as our troops are getting these books and as they're deployed overseas and as they're handing it out to the children that they come across in, in wherever they are stationed, that, that you are uh, introducing them to those characters as well. So right now there could be a child halfway across the world, or soon there will be a child yeah. halfway across the world with a copy of Wolf Boy in their hand. And that's a, yeah. that's a question. Right? Yeah, I can't wait, man. That's, as an artist, a creator, that's the number one thing you want. Even a musician, you want people to hear your music. And I still get such a thrill about when I watch people, when I see people reading my comic. And when I was a little kid, I would make comics and give them to mom and dad to read. And I'd sit next to them as they read it out loud. And I would laugh the whole time. So I'm still like that. Like when my books come to my house, I put books on my kitchen table to see who picks them up. And whenever anyone reads them, I sit there and watch them read it. And it's right. <laughs> like my books, they don't take very long to read, but, uh, but they read it to me and I'm laughing and it's, it's such a thrill. And um, that's the biggest thing I like to hear is when people read them and they, they learn how to read through reading my books, but mm -hmm. I can't wait to get some feedback from these kids who are getting the, the books donated. So it's going to be fun, man. I, I'm, I'm at a good point right now. Like I already got, I wanted to do monthly books starting January, starting this year. And I'm already nine months ahead. So I have books coming out all the way to August. Like I got them all set up and I, I keep printing them and I keep uh, uh, 
getting copies delivered to my house. So I have a stack of boxes here that I could release them all right away, but right. I want to kind of release them each one book on my website a month. And uh, uh, just yesterday I put up uh, Patrick, the Wolf Boy number two, it's the Halloween issue. So that one just made it up there yesterday. So I'm real, I'm real excited about this. And I have like uh, all my characters, like spider monkeys getting a book and meteor mite and lunar lizard. And uh, it's fun, man. And like, yeah. And yeah. right now, like, um, I, in the last few years, I've been digging into my characters that I created when I was a kid. And I found my superhero books that I made when I was 16. And I I put them on my comic book rack here. And my daughter oh, uh, started reading them. And she's 17 now. So this was like she was 10 or 11 years old. She started reading them. And she said, Daddy, did you make these books? I'm like, yeah. yeah. She said, when did you make these? It says 1986 on these. I'm like, yeah, I was 16. She went, wait a minute, you were a kid? I'm like, yeah. She That's goes, not well, possible. Yeah, she said, but why are these books good? They're fun to read. I'm like, wow. I don't know. I guess I knew how to make comics. So yeah. she said, you should bring these back, these these superhero characters. So I've been doing that. And like that was my book called Powers in Action, which is um was mm -hmm. published by Action Lab. It's on my site too. But like I've been bringing back superheroes and coming out in August is um is this oh look I got a visual. I got a visual. It's Yogs the Cranobi Tales. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, this is coming out with Mad Cave in uh paper cuts in in August. And this was um this is the very first characters that I've ever started that I've ever worked on. And when when in when nine, in nine, when you nine, the very first you, you are you referring yeah. to like I, I think I just cut you off. You were going to say, you're talking about like 1986, 1990. It was uh, 1992 is when I started uh -huh. working on these guys. They're called the Craze, Cray Babies, but now the book's called Yogs. Um, but the very first book I self-published was called Cray Baby Adventures. And I had to self-publish because no one wanted to hire me. And everyone told me I was too cartoony that I'm never making a comic book. So I started publishing my own book. And I published about 10 issues of the Cray Baby Adventures. And when I did um, some books for uh, paper cuts, I did a book called Gilbert, the Little Merman. And after I did four books, and then after that, they said to me, I said, what else you got? What else characters you have that are not Gilbert? They like they didn't want to spin off. They want something new. And I brought them the craze. I brought them like uh, did a six page thing. And that's what the that's what this preview book printed. It actually printed my six page pitch that I pitched to them. Oh, nice. And I say, here's a story. And it just wraps up what happened. It's like a recap what happened so far. And so um, they loved it. And then I'm doing three books. I'm doing three 80 page books of, of Yogs. And so it comes out in August, which is, which is kind of nuts because something I created in 1992 that I, I, I drew it because I had to learn how to make comics. And the first, like when a creator looks back at their young work, they always like cringe and I look at the first three issues of that was like real hard to read. And it was, uh, the jokes were, were, were bad. I, I watched a lot of, uh, Wayne's world and oh, jerky yeah, boys yeah. at the time. Yeah. So a lot of my jokes were like that, like, yeah. you know, just weird jokes, like, uh, like, uh, uh, sexy, but like making fun of people, you know, like I didn't uh -huh. really have fart jokes or poop jokes, but it was all weird stuff. And so, oh, no. I understand. So, uh, I, grew, I, yeah. I grew up around the same time, so I'm familiar with Wayne's World. I got God help us, yeah. my friends. We were all addicted to the Jerky Boys tape, so I, I can understand. Yeah, and, and every joke we made thereafter was uh, it sounded like it. We just took it right from the tape, so it influenced everything we were saying and doing. Yeah, so. me too. Hey, Jerky. Right. Hey, hey. Lips. yeah. So like all yeah. my <laughs> so all my comics were uh, the first first few books were 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 tough to read, and then it, it finally. Story started finally making sense, so that's what I, I I'm rewriting all the stories, and they're coming out again. So it's not a reprint; it's like re I'm redrawing it, rewriting it. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, that, that I mean, and that that really, uh, absolutely, yeah, that sounds amazing. I mean, that to, after all these years, that come into fruition almost, a little over thirty years later now. Yeah, you haven't, you yeah, maybe more. I don't know. Yeah. And even my kids are saying, uh, "Wait, you brought back your superheroes from your teenager and your." your other your craze from uh when you're in college like yeah and they said well what are you gonna do now like that's it like right. i came full circle <laughs> so uh, i don't so, know i don't know what's gonna happen I mean, now. Your, your, your experience your technique 
your style, your writing, they, they've all improved over time. And I know before you had mentioned uh, Electric Milk is yeah. your baby. It's it's the company that you established. That's yeah. your art studio. Uh, yeah. And uh, whether it's uh, am I am I there's a painting behind you. Is that yeah. an Art Balthazar original? It is. It is. Right. It's a. I have this giant canvas. I use this for a backdrop because it is nicer than just. Oh, yeah. You'll see my basement behind me. It's my. I have a. I'm my art studio is my basement. So I have all the walls are painted. And I have action figures all over the place. I have posters and paintings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so this painting started out uh, with all of the leftover paint that when I paint, I have extra. So this painting is not complete. As you can see, there's a spaceship on here that still has to blast off. So I have a lot of detail. I still have to work in there. But this is a painting that's being put together whenever I have leftover paint. I add to it. So I, I use and, it as a backdrop. Sure- <laughs> I'm sure it's rarer when you have time. It's yeah, few- and uh, <laughs> right because I have a few paintings that are in Prague. I have one over there on the easel. And I have two over the, on that side, two more uh-huh. easels. So my whole my whole basement is a, uh, a, a, a evolving workshop. I have it's real cool down here, but I I purposely don't have a TV or anything like that, or right. uh, because then I would my my family would never see me. All I, I told them I need is a I need a, a TV a refrigerator and a bar and you guys would, you know, I would never, you'd, and then if I install a bathroom, I don't know when I would see anybody. Right. <laughs> yeah. The dad <laughs> under the, the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so w- with, with these decades of now experience under your yeah. belt, uh, would you uh, have any advice to offer any aspiring artists who are looking to get into the field? Maybe a 16 year old who's out there right now, doodling away in their book with the idea that one day this too could be a comic book. Would you have any advice to give uh, that young person doing that? Yeah. I, I recommend you carry a sketchbook around all the time. Uh, Mm. I have a book here. I'm going to show you. I, I work on this. Here's my, here's a new story right now. I'm working on it's uh, I don't know what it is. Oh, the meteor Mm. might. And I just, I just wrote in this today. And so I carry a book around with me all the time. And it's always next to me. It's everywhere I go. I have a little book. Look, I even have one here. In my, I have a little book inside my uh, jacket. I just always have books on me. And it's, you're like the rushing I, nesting dolls of sketchbooks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I recommend always carrying a sketchbook, drawing it, uh, writing it, writing it, put ideas in it. And you don't really need a finished piece in a sketchbook. Sketchbook should be ideas. If you do do a finished piece, that's cool, but that's not really what it's for. It's it's meant for you to sketch and put ideas and write stories and just do things like that. And I carry around everywhere. I love to go places and write. I love to sit in coffee shops or restaurants and write. I love to sit outside on my on my deck and write. But if you're going to start out making comics, the only way to get into it is just start. You have to do it. Right. Just make a comic book and don't worry about working for the big companies because uh, I started in 92. I went for an interview, uh, portfolio reviews, and they all trashed me. And I was like literally crying. I had to call my mom and said that I don't know why I went to art school. And then I didn't get my job with uh, with Disney was the first one who hired me, actually. And that was 2003. So from 92 to 2003, uh, I was doing my own stuff. And uh, working part-time jobs, just trying to uh, pay rent and to pay a right. printer bill. And so, but right now with internet, back then there was no internet. But right now with internet, you could publish your stuff for free. Just upload it somewhere. You could have, uh, I'm sure that there's things on uh, uh, social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, just post your things. People can read it. If you want people to see your art, there's lots of ways. Or you can make videos uh, on YouTube. You could do all kinds, there's so much opportunity for a creative person, like artist, musician, writer, all of those things um, that was never around in, in the nineties. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and, uh, and it's just, you just have to do it. And there's low print, low print, print run guys. They're all over the place. You look for someone who could print your comic. And that's what I do. I print, I only print like a few hundred now instead of a few thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, used to be minimum print was like a thousand or two thousand. Now it's like a hundred. You can get like twenty five copies of your book printed. So, I like it's. There's a lot of opportunity now to 
self-publish. And the only thing that will cause you to fail is if you don't do it. And that's pretty much yeah, right. it. Yeah. And like uh, just a few weeks ago, my daughter was show me on her phone. She makes videos and she's making a, like a birthday video or something. And it's like a three minute video that she's, what well, didn't have it done yet, but she, she made it look like a, a music video. I forgot who, who was singing, what song it was, but it was a real song. So I, and my advice was like, oh, you can't put that on YouTube. She's, I'm just going to share it with friends. Like, all right, that's cool. But she showed it to me and it looked like a real video with a bunch of kids dancing around and they're driving around or doing all these things because she's clipping everything together and editing, oh, yeah. editing yeah, it. Yeah. And she said, this is what I want to do. I want to make movies. I want to go to school to learn how to make movies. And I told her, you're already making movies. Just keep doing this. You're already right. doing it. And and her eyes open and like, really? She mm -hmm. goes, I am doing it. I go, yeah. It's like when you go to school, you can learn that too. And then you're going to realize when you go to school, there's going to be more equipment and more tools you can use to enhance what you're already doing. So right. there's things out there that she's going to discover making movies and editing and, and adding music that I don't know how to do. And she doesn't know how to do it yet because she, no one showed her yet. But once she learns all that, it's like 10 years from now, I expect to have like a opening night at, at a local theater or something, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that was, that was happening. So like there's opportunity for everything right now. And that's what I would say to young people. Just, just do it. Right. Com um, com you yeah. have to commit, take the time and explore your passion. And, and like mm -hmm. you said, the, the, uh, they do have uh, uh, technological advancements that we didn't have when we were younger. So yeah. they, they have access to things, uh, social media, they said YouTube and they're, they're all these outlets out there to get the yeah. get that work out there. You're absolutely our right. biggest, our biggest thing was Kinko's. If Kinko's <laughs> wasn't open 24 hours, there wouldn't be no comics. Oh yeah. Cause I, I would go there and, and then you cut and paste and shrink it with a, you got to do a percentage of on the Xerox machine to shrink it and then put it in a spot and glue it with, with pay, paste up, paste stick, whatever that glue stick. Right. And that, that was it. And then, you, you, you make copy and you lift that machine and your little thing that you glued is on the machine. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, or it's stuck to the glass. So there's all that stuff. Like we were there at Kinko's trying to make copies of your book before the show, you know, right. and stapling them. So that stuff, uh, I haven't that, done that in years. Yeah. yeah now now <laughs> your, phone is a, your phone is a scanner. Your phone is an editor. Yeah. That on there, right? Unbelievable. Yeah. And it's funny because like when if I need a page, like a pinup page for one of my books, I'll reach out to my friends and uh, see what I, I do a book. Now I do it like an art sketchbook. And a lot of times like to try to get my painting into a, a book, I have to scan it. Now I just take a photo of it yep, yep. <laughs> and I actually put the photo in my comic and it looks great. I publish I it and, it and print it. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's that's a so that, that, that is excellent advice. And I'm, I'm sure uh, hopefully uh, whether they're young people or just aspiring artists uh, he hearing mm -hmm. this uh, will hopefully take those words to heart and follow their passion just as you did. Uh, but uh, but over your career, you, you've taken a shot at a lot of different characters, a lot yeah. of different, uh, whether it, it creator owned, whether it was uh, uh, an IP from another company. But uh, uh, from, of all the work that you've put out there for the world to enjoy, wh which would you say is the one that you are most proud of? Oh man, I always like the newest thing the best, <laughs> but I've yeah. been working. I got so many new books, but I really, I'm really proud of Action Cat and Adventure Bug mm. uh, because they're, I'm proud of all of them, but I really like Action Cat and Adventure Bug because they were started out as the mascots for our store mm -hmm. and people loved them and knew who they were before there was any, there was even a comic book. Oh, we had them. We had them on our on our wall in the store painted, and we had them on our business cards, and said, "Oh yeah, comics were a little cat and a bug flying." And originally, their names were just cat and bug, and so now I added them action cat adventure bug, so action adventure, and uh, but those characters seem to take over and become something before I even had time to make it into something. So I like how those characters grew and got a fan base even before it was a comic book. And then once I made the comic and we, we decided to, uh, to do all your comics as a, actual comics for our store. Um, now kids can read those adventures and I'm still making stuff now. So the books that are still going. So those are characters that 
I don't think are ever going to go away because I keep bringing them back. And there's so much to Action Cat and Adventure Bug that there's really no backstory. Mm-hmm. I don't have to keep continuity. There's nothing. There's just they're just like um, it's like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, or like you know they're like characters that yep they're just like, there. They're they just, just yeah, right. Yeah. yeah why, why is Mickey Mouse uh, driving a train? Who cares? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Does he you know, right. have a CDL oh, license? Man. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, continuity is cool, yeah. but sometimes it's really like a, a curse and a lot of times too, where it kind of de- deprives uh, of creativity, where you kind of, you're stuck to a certain path, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you don't have to follow that. You can you do what you want, what yeah, feels yeah. right for the character. He, can, the he can do anything he wants. And right. uh, so, so I like you. that. Yeah, and that yeah. <laughs> in a, in, a, in a way, a lot of people tell me that Action Cat and Adventure Bug are like me and Franco. Then when right. they when they read them, they hear our voices in the characters. So <laughs> so that's kind of cool. And that is uh, very cool. Yeah, so, I like them all. Yeah. No, no, yeah, I, and that's a, that's an amazing story. Uh, and, and as as they were the mascots of All oh, Yeah Comics, mm-hmm. wh- and I know you guys have a lot of cool appearances, a lot of cool. Uh, artists and writers coming to the shops. Uh, are there any uh, appearances coming up that people would want to know about? People want to come and visit the shop and see? I mean, you want to come and visit yeah. the shop the daily anyway, but uh, for appearances. Yeah, we, I don't know offhand uh, who's coming, but I know that we're going to have a lot of people there for free comic book day. Okay, uh, I'm going to be there. Maybe my friend Eric Wolfgang will be there. Uh, there'll be a bunch of people. We always have people on free comic day, which is like, um, the beginning of May, I think first weekend of May. Uh, but we had guests there in the past, like we had Mike McNola at our store. We had uh, uh, Alex Ross and Mark Wade. And we had in the New York store, we had uh, uh, Walt Simonson, Louise Simonson. We have Jerry Ordway always pops in and out. And uh, so we have, we know a lot of people. So I don't know who's going to come up in the next year or so, but I'm sure somebody cool will, will come by. Oh, but I, I know a lot of Chicago guys, too. So I know Free Comic Book Day is a big celebration. Well, and, I, I, uh, oh. yeah, I, I was, I was just going to say, we go all night. <laughs> I guess even more of a reason to kind of stick to your socials, uh, stick to the website, Facebook. I, I know you guys do a lot of great Facebook lives. Uh, you uh, Yeah. And uh, and uh, on Instagram as well. So I guess that's even more of a reason to follow you on social media so we can find out who's coming, when they're coming, and uh, when we yeah. can stop well, yeah, we're all over the place. Uh, right. Our guys at the store do a a Tuesday show from Skokie every Tuesday to show the new books. And then Mark from uh, Harrison, New York, he does live sales all the time. So we got a lot of social media, especially Facebook and, and Instagram. But I do live shows on, on YouTube. We have a Aya yeah Comics YouTube channel. So we're uh, we're all over the place, man. I, I like it. Like every aspect of my day is uh, wake up and what am I going to do today? Never, I never bored. I always, I was complaining about this to my daughter today. Cause I, I was a little grumpy earlier. Um, and I'm only, I get like grumpy, but not because of anybody. It's because I don't have enough time. Like mm-hmm. I got so much stuff to do and there's only just so much time. And I forget to include the time where I have to eat and sleep. Right. And that's always, the, that's right. always the time that's, yeah, yeah and I I'm wondering, like, like, and if I come down, like, I get my coffee and come down to work, I'm good for three or four hours, and then I wonder why am I crashing? And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I forgot to eat. Right. Then I have right. to go eat, take a break, and then like, if I take an hour break to eat, I get anxious and I want to hurry up and get back to work. So that's kind of where I was, you know. Right. But that's kind of like that's like I don't have enough time in the day to do what the things I want to do, and it gets to the point too, like, I have to figure out like all the stuff I'm going to do for the week. And I actually have to do the math, like how many hours times, how many pages, time, how many, how many of these, what can I get done by the time Friday comes? Uh, maybe I'll have all this work done and all these packages will go in the mail and these paintings will be done. So it's kind of like, uh, it's cool. It's uh, I'm never complaining, but it's always a struggle. Sure. To, it's a struggle to juggle. So, but it's happening. You know, I've been doing it for a while <laughs> and, and, and I don't know how. I mean, it's only 24 hours in a day. I don't know how you're doing it all. It's really uh, I know. <laughs> uh, it, it, so if you don't mind, I want to I want to hit you with a tiny, uh, a literal teeny tiny game. I'm going to call it teeny yeah. the teeny tiny treatment. Yeah. 
We'll go for some massive <laughs> alliteration here. And I'm going to give you some characters. And I would love to hear if you think that they should or shouldn't get the teeny tiny treatment. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. well, let's, start with, let's start with uh, Wolverine. Wolverine, yeah. I actually want to work on him. Uh, but I think he would work good as a, as a side character with the Hulk and the thing. No. Like I could, I could, if I could see him just being a pest, <laughs> and trying to claw up the Hulk's arm, and he just keeps swatting him away. So yeah, I, I, I would love but, to do that with right. X Men too and Nightcrawler, Colossus. But I'm a, I want to work on the Hulk and thing and Wolverine someday. That'd be fun. I already have an idea. Oh, I can only <laughs> imagine. I can only imagine. Uh, Punisher, Frank Castle. Yeah, he'll work. I will probably yeah. have to give him a, a, a gun that shoots bubbles. Yeah, super well, soaker. Yeah. yeah, something will happen. I I imagine like Punisher versus Jonah Hex. That'd be funny. Oh, yes. Or, or like Snake Eyes from the G.I. Joe. Oh, my God. You're you hit, you hitting all my favorites. You're hitting all my oh, yeah. favorites. <laughs> uh, Th- Thor and Loki. Thor and Loki, of course. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting yelled at by their dad all the time. Uh, and in my I, story, the mom would be around, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ghost Rider. Oh, he'd be good. He'd be yeah. riding a little tricycle on fire. That's I do funny. a lot of sketches of Ghost Rider. And it's funny when I sketch him. I draw him real sloppy and real fast and fun. Mm-hmm. And it's just scribbled all, all out of fire. And uh, most people, when they ask it, I can tell they look nervous. They don't know where I'm doing. And then when I give them the drawing, they're like, oh, cool. <laughs> they, like, <laughs> they like it, yeah. <laughs> you, you, I mean, they're, they're not wrong. You, you draw, you so, you're so fast. And from the moment you put pen, uh, pencil to paper, I'm like, what is, oh, that's what that yeah. is. It's yeah, it, 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 comes into, <laughs> it comes into play real quick. It appears uh, before your eyes, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but now, now, of course, when I do see you at New York Comic Con, I am going to have to get a Ghost Rider on a tricycle because that's <laughs> burning in my head like the Ghost Rider's skull. That's fun. Uh, how about the Watchmen? Oh, yeah. I drew a, <laughs> I drew a few Watchmen sketches like that. A little watchman and uh and i think i kid i called them the little watch kids because they want right. to be men they're, yeah they're right kids. I, I think, watch kids right yeah uh, but oh sorry yeah i can see a little rorschach running around and uh a little naked dr manhattan but he'd have a diaper on or something <laughs> yeah definitely Just have a diaper it. yeah all right and and the last one i'll hit you with uh star trek any kind of iteration that you might be a fan of Mm, not really in a Star Trek, but I could do something with Spock. Maybe a Tribble. I would just want the Tribbles. No one else, just Tribbles. Just just a whole thing about Spock. A whole book, just the Tribbles. Nice. Yeah, they would eat Spock. Do the Tribbles eat the humans? (laughs) I I, 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 I don't know. I I, I consider myself a Star Trek fan. I don't know. I I think they do. I think eventually they would just reproduce enough that they would uh, consume anything in their path, I would imagine. Like I think they they would be meat eaters. I don't know. I will watch uh, the first movie I saw of Star Trek was the one where Kirk met met God. It looked like he met God. Oh, I'm I don't so know sorry to hear that. Yeah, that Star That's, Trek Five. Yeah, I saw that one, and I'm like, yeah. I went oh. to the movies with my friends. And I'm like, that was kind of right. weird. And I saw the very You're first right. one, uh, the motion picture. I saw that, okay. and I was bored out of my mind. I saw it when I was a kid. But I recently you. saw that, and a few years ago, I watched it again, and I loved it. And I thought yeah. it was, I thought yeah. it was great. I saw, and I loved that. There was no words for like twenty minutes. They were just showing the ship, and mm-hmm. it was kind of like, "Ooh, look at what we have! How shiny and <laughs> gleaming!" And and the ship was a character, and it was such a big oh, reveal yeah. that I enjoyed it. And um, but I tried watching uh, the show. Uh, a lot of my friends are Star Trek fran- fans, and and they do a Star Trek podcast and stuff. So I like, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna watch it because I don't. I really never saw it. So I started watching the original series, and I made it through like the first six episodes, and then I'm like, I can, okay, I get it. And I know that TV back then in the '60s was written week by week. It wasn't really meant for binge watching. Mm-hmm. because it doesn't really connect. There's like individual episodes. So I understood it. Like, okay, the last one I saw, like I think they went to a Western town where all of the adults were kids uh-huh. or something. And so I can't. They always find a way to yeah. a planet where it's all Western. The entire yeah. 
or yeah, or they're old timey or something. Yeah, right, right, right. And but they're on Earth, but it's not Earth. Yeah. Whatever, so, whatever yeah. the back lot is set up for at the moment, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got the Psycho Two house. All right, let's go film. Let's go. <laughs> so I get it, but I never, it ne never really stuck because uh the first thing that blew my mind was star wars and i blame star wars and breaking bad ruin every tv show for me because if it's not as good as those two things i i'm not into it and like yeah. i i watch breaking bad like 14 times i love that movie i love that show i, I watch it over and over and i love uh quentin tarantino movies so anything that's not as good as these things i get bored with and i don't know I, I try everything, but I nothing sticks. I can't get into a show. Yeah. Walking Dead stuck a little bit, but I can't. I can't get in a lot of stuff. And I tried Star Trek, but I know this is a long answer for your Star Trek. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> but you I'm up. But it, I'm a Star Wars guy. Yeah. <laughs> the more you talk, the more I realize there's a reason that uh, I was always drawn to your art and drawn to your style. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm connecting with another because I swear to goodness, my son would agree with every word that just came out of your mouth. He's a huge Star Wars fan. Breaking Bad is the measurement by which all shows are now measured. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, and he is spoiled by it. He, he So it's it, it's very understandable. Uh, very understandable. And especially, and I do apologize that Star Trek V was your first four. Yeah. Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> it that, was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. That, I mean, I, I don't even think arguably. Definitely the, just the worst of all of them. Um, I saw the one where... Um... Where the the Borg ship or the Enterprise crashed into the woods into the forest? Oh yes, yes. I uh, saw perfect. that one. That had Picard in there. That's right. John Luke yeah. Picard. I saw that one. I think the board the board queen was in there. Yeah, that's probably uh, the closest to like a horror movie they ever made. Yeah, and right. I, the one show, the one series I watched was um with Chicote, Chicote, that oh, lady, uh, Voyager. Janeway. Yeah, she kept calling Chicote. So <laughs> yeah. I would watch that because I was working in an art studio at that time and. We they put that on, so mm -hmm. I was watching and seven of nine. So That's I saw right. her yeah. transform, so I saw that. So I guess I liked that. That was pretty good, but I didn't see all of it. I only saw maybe four episodes in a row. Okay. It was the origin of the of the Borg lady, but it was right after that movie, and I thought it was supposed to be the same. But, but oh, yeah, that so yeah, yeah. was okay. Chakotay is okay. Continuity. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that, that's, that's all I really know. No, no. Well, listen, you, you, I appreciate the effort. I appreciate you trying to get into Star Trek. It's better than yeah. most. Better than well, you imagine like growing up. Okay, I was like little kid reading, uh, reading Spider Man and the Jackal comics, and watching mm. Super Friends, and watching the '60s Spider Man cartoon, and then watching um, uh, Spider Man and his Amazing Friends, and then seeing oh, yeah. seeing Star Wars. Then the next summer was Superman the movie. Then it was so, Indiana yeah. Jones. Then it was E. T. And then another Star Wars movie, then another Superman movie, then another Star Wars movie. And then imagine, then slightly after that was like Ghostbusters, then oh, yeah. Back to the Future, Batman, Batman, Michael Keaton. So imagine that series, that 10 year, 10 to 15 year of growing up watching those movies as a kid. Oh, so all of that's in my head. And that's what kind of forged me, what made me into, into now. And right. so like I missed... I missed the Ninja Turtles. I missed He-Man somehow, but I caught Thundercats stayed with me, but okay. I missed, I was a little bit too old for, I read the comic books and Ninja Turtles, but I was a little too old for the cartoon because I think I was in college by then and I didn't quite, He-Man didn't stick. So I missed it and the Transformers never saw it. So like all of that stuff missed, but when Batman 89 came out, that was it. Batman was back. Oh. And Batman, so yeah. all of that stuff, like if it's not better than all those movies I just named, like, I don't know what, what is. And mm -hmm. all those franchises are still out there. Like it's besides back to the future, but Ghostbusters still out there. Batman's Indiana still out Jones. there. Indiana Jones, Star Wars. Yeah. It's all there. It's never going away. And, and the people who own it won't let it go away. And they right. know because guys like me and you, I was I'm about 54. to say, yeah. yeah, I'm 54 years old and I still want more Star Wars. And I've been watching it since I'm eight years old. So it's I mean, stuck. So it's a good time to be a fan. Yeah. I mean, and like, so as, as long as it's, as long as it's good, I just want yeah. it to be good. I want it to, I just want it to be good. And sometimes yeah. you watch Star Wars and you're like, oh, that was all right. You know, it was okay. Right. And then you, 
you go on the internet and realize you were right. Like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> it didn't stick. But there is some good Star Wars. There's some okay Star Wars. But when you watch it all, I still enjoy watching it. And like, mm-hmm. whenever they have these new Disney Plus shows, I'm there at 2 a.m. every Wednesday. I'm mm. at I'm at my TV or my computer. I wait till like 10 minutes after two. You know, it goes on so I don't so I could watch it and maybe not get any streaming interruptions. Oh yeah, but yeah. uh. But man, I'm there. I I, I mean, love yeah, watching Obi Wan. Yeah, watching oh, yeah, Vader he, fight Obi Wan was cool. Yeah. Oh, so Obi Wan. Obi Wan was fun. Obi Wan was fun. Yeah. Uh, I Mandalorian, just yeah. beautiful. It's the uh, best thing. Ever. I, I I'm a few episodes into <laughs> Andor. I don't know if you've watched Andor. I'm a few episodes in. I I uh, my, I keep being told that the pace is going to pick up and it's going to be yeah. one of the best stories. I I have to find the the it hurts. The, energy to kind of get through it you know yeah it hurts real bad i still yeah. haven't got through it i started with with episode six because i people told me it doesn't pick up to episode oh, six okay so I'm right, like, right i'm gonna start with that one and it was all right but uh i'm getting through it i still got to get through the last two i keep starting them but it loses me man i was like it's like all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> it's sorry, like I, when I, you're I, listening to your history teacher oh no, you start fading wait, wait, I, I am the history teacher yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> I had a good I had a good history teacher. Maybe I see your algebra teacher, maybe. There you go. There you go. Oh, <laughs> Calculus algebra. teacher. God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I do like history. US history. I love it. Hey, there you go. There you go. Uh <laughs> that's awesome. Uh art art, I really, really wanted to just take a second. First of all, you you're absolutely as amazing to talk to as your art is to see. So thank oh, you thanks, very much. No, really. I, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, everybody, that was Art Baldazar. This has been the Cosmic <laughs> Comic Nation, and I'm still Tom Torme, and it's been a lot of fun. And until next time, everybody, be well and stay safe. Oh, yeah, man. You guys are awesome. Okay, oh, bye. Thanks, Art. <laughs> bye, everybody. Cool. <laughs>